Pop Spotlight, brought to you by Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. Hey everyone, I'm Adam here from Bulls Tabletop News with... Evan from Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. We're back with another Tabletop Spotlight. Evan! Yes? I've heard of this game before, Viceroy. Mm -hmm. Viceroy, yes. Yeah, but what's going on? Technically not a new game, it is a reprint, but it's been out of stock ah. for a while. We're uh, very excited to have it back. Ah. Uh, it's a game that was originally made by Hobby World, which are okay. from Europe. Um, oh, and, and this was a port over? Across the pond over, gotcha. yeah. So, okay. uh, yeah, because I, I, I recognize the name, but I wasn't. Mm -hmm. this box looks totally new to me. Yeah, so, so it's a very good game, um, yeah. and basically you're just building a pyramid of power, kind of okay. matching colors. We'll, we'll describe it. In is it a card game, board game? It's a card game. It is yeah. a card mm -hmm. game with, okay. But oh. you're building kind of a board, if that makes sense. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, that sounds pretty cool, and again, it, it did sound familiar, so um, yeah. I'm excited to take a look inside the new version of Viceroy. 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 I'm interested about this one again. Again, it, it sounded familiar, but I wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. To build your pyramid of power. Box before, so. Here is the backside of the boss box. Um, the boss. Uh, is this the is boss. just an example of kind of what the pyramid's going to look like. Um, yeah. The color coding aspects, stuff like that. Uh, you ready to open it up? Actually, I'm, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. I, I really like this the the art so far, but it looks like it's got that kind of fantasy medieval setting. Yeah. Around. Yeah, and it, the, the description is like the time when. Uh, everything was declared by brute force has passed now politicians blah, okay, blah, blah. so yeah uh, It's kind of like the end of the like a fantasy end of the Middle Ages uh, End of the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, <laughs> maybe is there an end of the I Lord know, of the Rings? I never saw uh, um, The endings just kept coming. All, all right, right. Let's open, it up. open it up here. <laughs> if I can open the box. It's actually got a pretty nice uh, text Like a map quality. Finish. Yeah, yeah. So. all right, here we go So this is just the rule. We'll, we'll go over those in a second. A second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these little things right here, these are uh, your secret Ooh. screens. Uh, they have different characters on the each end, but they do the same thing. They're, okay. not, they're not like different abilities or anything like that. Uh, you just place it down on the inside of the screen. It'll go yeah. over like what you can do, what each uh, symbol means and stuff like that. So it's it's pretty helpful. Okay, cool. We'll get these out. Then we have score cards. Yeah. Yep. So comes with a lot too. So. Yep. Have yeah. quite a few. Yeah. So lots of replay value. Right yeah. Up so these again don't actually matter. These are just the different characters. Yeah, uh, they don't have any powers or anything. These are the gems. Basically, they're kind of like currency in the game. Uh, you'll use them to be betting uh, to get new cards and okay. stuff like that. Uh, it's really cool too because um, May yeah Mayday these, Games. Uh, these are double flower. Okay, double yeah. flower. Mayday Games, uh, who is publishing this game for the United States, you can go on their website uh, and buy actual physical gems. Oh, which is really cool for nice. this game. These are scrolls that kind of work like, if anyone's played like uh, Seven Wonders, they kind of like work, work like that. Uh, yeah. If you have a lot of scrolls, you get more points to the end of the game. These swords are your attack. Uh, at the end of the game, if you have the most swords, you get to uh, not lose points, basically. All your other opponents will lose four points while you do not lose any points. Okay, okay so, so having swords kind of... If you have the, if you have more swords... Yeah, yeah okay. But, as we'll see uh, in a second, there are shields, and we'll go over that in a second. These are victory points. They'll just right. help you keep track of it. These are all front and back. Yeah, there's... Yeah, yeah. actually, yeah. Uh, oh, and I'm sorry, the, the sword has a shield on the back. Uh, the shields, basically, are if, uh, at the end of the game, someone has the most, most swords, each shield negates one it's, sword oh. so if you negate them all you don't lose any points as well okay so yeah. for instance if you have if i had the most swords which you had and say i had like six swords and yeah. you had four shields mm -hmm. you would only 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 end up losing like two points yeah exactly yeah okay so that's kind of how it works um so you can like play defensively but also yeah. offensively uh we have the, these go on the cards themselves and the cards will say when they go on there but right. they'll, they'll add extra points at the end for instance if you have four matching blue you'll get Bonus on top of what you usually get, plus two. Okay. Um, and then that's the back of those. From the back, yep. All right, so we get baggies. That's like always those. nice. You're going to need those. That's yeah. a lot of punch outs. <laughs> and we're going to open these up because it's actually kind of important to see the cards. So they're kind yeah. of the important part of the game. Yeah. And uh, then, while you're doing that off yeah. camera, again, nothing nothing underneath. Uh, we do like to check because sometimes they, they hide stuff. But just to be sure, see, there's nothing nothing else going on in there. I'm gonna move the box to the side here. I just kind of threw the cards everywhere. I'm sorry. All right. All right. So here's some examples of the cards. I'll give you some of these to look at. Yeah. Uh, but these are like the these are the characters you're gonna be building a pyramid with. Now you'll notice at the top two corners uh, there's uh, a quarter of a circle. Uh, these you're gonna be pairing up with other people, and then at the very bottom you have half a circle. Zoom in on these cards. Oh yeah, yeah. See a little bit. Yeah. There, there we go. go. Um, 
and depending on what level they are in the pyramid, they do different things. So this bottom one, uh, you'll get a scroll, but that's only if you spend one green gem. Uh, and you can keep building on the bottom as far as you want, but when you build on the top, like so, or actually let me find someone who has a red, uh, like so. Uh, and you don't have to match these up, but it's helpful. Like, you uh, get more so points. if I yeah. did that, yeah. You get more points, but you don't have to. You can put a green one here. Okay. Um, these two are on the second level, so that means you can get a um, like four of any gym, or this one is uh, you can get any of these cards, just kind of like ability cards. Uh, but you can only get those if you spend two yellow for, in this case, or a green and a red. So the more higher they get, the better abilities you can get, but the more gems it's gonna cost to get those abilities. Okay, so okay. you wanna, in the beginning of the game, kinda of start off building your base, and then start working your way up. Okay, That's good and strategy somehow, for it. somehow yeah. you manage to uh, put like a matching gem color next to each other. Yes. Or, or like, maybe, like this is a bad example, but like this is gonna start the next red gem like that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, you don't need to put down a matching, but if you do have a full one at the end of the game, that's more victory points at the end of the ah. game. Yeah. So it. So it's not required, but no. it totally helps out. But it totally, it gives you a lot of points at the yeah, end. And nobody can see what we're talking about. So. Oh yeah. Let's, <laughs> just realize. There we Sorry, go. folks. We're talking about up here, uh, but like this is an example too. You don't have to make full matching circles. Like this one's not matching at all, but it's yeah. it's still a legal move. It's just at the end of the game. For every one of these full matching circles, you get more victory points at the end. So okay. you kind of want to try for it at least. Well, aside from that, the the art on the cards looks really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, then you also have these cards. These are kind of like ability cards you can also place in the pyramid. Um, some of them, for instance, are like there's one card I know about where it's you get victory points for every other character surrounding it. Uh -huh. So if you had put it here, for instance, and you had characters up here, you would get. One, two, three, four, uh, five, six oh, victory yeah, points. Yeah. So there's cards like that um, that give you different abilities and stuff like that. And whenever you see these symbols right here, those are you can get those cards if you spend that much, basically. Okay, yeah. well, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, again, pretty pretty straightforward mm -hmm. as far as I go. And it is a lot about the color matching, but it's not required. So yeah. uh, I like the fact that you can still play cards mm -hmm. yeah. even if you don't. Uh, match the gems up exactly but they are beneficial if you if you can yeah so let's take a cool, uh, look at the rule book because there's kind of a betting aspect we should talk about yeah but, right uh, on. yeah let's oh. go ahead and uh, pause and do that right now here's the viceroy rule book yes full color looks pretty cool now you might be wondering how do you get more of these character cards yes let's I go over the rule book sure. and we'll find out all right so i'm gonna just open it real quick yep uh so i mean like every rule book uh, you're gonna have your game overview components set up yeah, uh, we can just kind of gloss over that. Actually, it's kind of important to know this setup. This is your market area. Okay. We'll have these four cards, which we forgot to show off, but they're basically just a blue, a green, a red, and a yellow gem on a card. Um, and then you'll have four below it. Now, these are characters that you can buy, but you cannot just spend money to buy them. Okay. Every player bets for them. So what they do ah. is they take a single gem of any color that they want, uh, according to that. So let's say I want a red one, or this guy under the red gym, I'll take a red gym. You put it in your hand and you put it uh, in secret out. When everyone has their hands out, then you flip, you flip it over. over. Now, if you're the only one who has that red one and that's what you are going for, you get that card. However, if there's someone else that has a red gym in their hand, you both lose those gems and nobody buys it. Ooh. Yeah. So. Uh, then what How happens, do you get more gems back then? Uh, well, you can always pass, which gives you lets you take three gems of any color, oh. or there are abilities on the cards that lets you get gems. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so there's there are turns you have to pass because you might not have any gems at all. Then what happens is whatever like cards whatever cards that weren't bought go on top, and then you redo the thing, uh, and then you bet again. Again, if there's someone else who has the same color, uh, you have to talk it through, man. It is, Someone's not going to get that card. Okay. Um, so that's kind of like the betting aspect. Uh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, the, the, kind of like the meat of the game. Um, it'll have playing the game, basically just how you build your pyramid, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, auction phase, that's what I was just talking about. The auction phase is kind of the, the, the really big interaction between the other players. Yeah, because uh, other than that, you're buying the heroes and you're... You're, you're building your own you're pyramid. Building yeah. pyramid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, what happens if you pass? Basically, you get three gems of your own desire uh, development phase that's just kind of where you can spend the gems to get the abilities ah. yeah and uh, the cards each, as we saw cards have different abilities like mm -hmm. you, yeah some of them can get you more and it depends on what what level the cards are on the pyramid yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
depending on like one through four, what level. Um, rewards, these could just go over what each uh, symbol means. We kind of already talked about that. And then the end of the game scoring. It's not a really complex game. Uh, it it's actually, like it's it nice no. and simple. Um, there's a cool betting aspect, and then there's just a building your pyramid and trying to like match things up. And that's, yeah. that's the like, nitty gritty of it, I guess you could say. Um, these are just kind of like FAQs. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, and then there's the solo rules as well. That's important to know. Yeah, which is um, kind of cool. Resolving conflicts, component limitations, stuff like that. Uh, and that's basically it. And there's and the, of course a we love the quick reference summary. on the back. Yeah, yeah this is not just a quick reference. This is just, just like a, what you can do to score. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how you win the game. Yeah, Rough, basically. Sorry, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Because uh, yeah, <laughs> if you don't know how to be, how to win the game, yeah, then... you're kind of just doing whatever. And yeah, exactly. You have no so, chance. So yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. It looks like a really fun game. And uh, again, I like the car mechanics. And yeah, let's hop out for a really fast recap. Well, that was Viceroy. Yes. Pretty cool game. Again, it is a redone uh, of a. Yeah, of, it's a reprint. A, yeah. Um, so it's yeah, it's back. It's back. Very better good. than Many ever. Games brought it back. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it looks really good. Uh, again, I like the artwork on it. Yeah. It's got that cool medieval fantasy kind of vibe. Yeah, going exactly. On. Yeah. Uh, I really like just the system of building a pyramid. Yeah. Nice. And then you get your little secret sheets, so you can't yeah. really see what everyone yeah. has. So yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool the stuff. Fighting so. system is nice too. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And I, again, simple mechanics. Yeah. It's fairly fairly easy to get a hold of and, and get your head kind of wrapped around. But uh, enough about that. Let's crunch the numbers on this bad boy real fast. Uh, Viceroy, how many players are we talking about for this I one? I think it is one to four players. Yes. One to four players. Mm -hmm. So you can play solo. Yes, there is a cool. solo variant in the yeah. rules. Yeah. Uh, and don't forget about that. And then what's the uh, age range on this one? Thirteen and up is recommended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably just because of the. It is. It's simple to learn, but it's not. It's got a little bit of complexity. Yeah. To it, so mm -hmm. that's probably why. Uh, and then what's the runtime on this one? Uh, Forty-five to sixty minutes. Not too bad. It depends on how many players you're playing. That's true. Of course, it always depends on the group you're playing. With, right. So. Totally. Totally. Yeah. But if you budget in about an hour. Yeah. should be good to go. So, yeah, and what's the uh, price point on Vice Royal? Thirty-five dollars even. Nice. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, I like it. Yeah, this is definitely one to keep an eye out yeah. for. Add to your uh, your game library. Reprint is brand new in stores today. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a classic for a reason, folks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Adam here. I'm Evan. Thanks again for watching. Have a good one. Tabletop Spotlight brought to you by Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. Thanks for watching. Oh.